You're watching Eagle News America. I'm Anna Kui in Las Vegas. Now let's head over to our friends in the north. Tougher COVID-19 restrictions are coming to Ontario. Bureau Chief Thomas Likeness joins us this evening for the details. Thomas? Thank you, Anna. You're right. Things are about to get a lot tougher in Canada's largest province. That's Ontario. You know, with new COVID case count numbers approaching 4,000 a day, Premier Doug Ford isn't going to sit idly by. The province already auguring its way through a four-week lockdown that began on December 26th. But it doesn't seem to be working. Now, Ford says new modeling numbers are due out on Tuesday. He's had a peek at them. He isn't revealing what they are, but he hints... He says they'll serve as a wake-up call. He says people, well, these are his words, fall out of their chairs when they see them. That's how shocking he expects the scenario to be. The measures that he's planning on introducing could include a province-wide curfew. Just how did things get so bad? I mean, we were doing so well up until about October. Well, Ford says too many people aren't following the rules. He says, no matter what I do, no matter what any level of government does, nothing is going to work unless people cooperate. And that's the fear that health, uh, the, the fear that health officials have now is, is trying to manage these growing case numbers. Now, as I said earlier, uh, Ontario reported almost 4,000 new cases. That's just today. 61 deaths in the last 24 hours. You can figure that out. That's about uh, uh, three deaths an hour. In around there, pretty close to that, two and a half deaths an hour. 21 of them, though, in seniors' homes. And again, think back to when the pandemic began in, in the spring. Seniors' homes were a hotbed for, for COVID-19. And unfortunately, that was where the majority of deaths were occurring. The, the government at that time, after the, the armed forces came in, fixed things up, did a whole report on that. The government promised to fix it up and, and, and things would improve. It looks like they've still got a big job ahead of them, as does the Premier, just trying to get people on board to fight this virus. So a pretty tough, uh, pretty serious situation in Ontario. In the meantime, I wish you all good health. In Edmonton, Canada, Thomas I. Likeness, Eagle News. We live in interesting times. Back to you, Anna. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, certainly staggering numbers there. Um, now, I know you've already... It sounds bad already, right? 4,000 uh, deaths, I mean, 4,000 cases each day and the, with that 61 new deaths. Now, can you, can you paint us a, uh, a better picture? How, how bad is it really? This is really beginning to hit the healthcare system hard. And people up here, we, we take our healthcare, I think sometimes for granted because there is no copay. If, uh, if I need to go to emergency today, if I need to go see my doctor today, I simply show up, present my, uh, my Alberta healthcare card, and that's it. I'll never see a bill for that, no matter what it is, unless it was something optional, like getting this, this crooked nose straightened. Obviously, you got to pay for that, but anything medically necessary. So as a result, I think sometimes people take our healthcare system for granted. This is how bad it is. The, the healthcare system is getting hit hard. The provincial government in Ontario has now ordered all hospitals, no matter where they are, all hospitals to reserve one third of their ICU beds for COVID patients because they will be transferring them from busier hospitals. What's even worse, more and more non-essential treatments being delayed. This would be things like elective surgery, any kind of a treatment that would require a bit of a hospital stay. What does that do? That's going to increase suffering for those patients. And what's next? I don't even want to think about it, but realistically, what could come next? Rationing. And we know that's happening in California already. Anna? Yes, I was going to mention that, that you know, that, that's horrible to even think about it, you know, to, for them to, and can you imagine how the healthcare workers feel, you know, to, to be making those decisions on who they're going to pick up and who they're going to take to the hospital and and then being turned away even when they get to the hospital, right? Now, Thomas, you mentioned earlier, uh, part of the reason is people are just not listening anymore. I mean, this started, this lockdown started on the 26th, so we're looking at maybe just a little bit more, little over two weeks. How, how else did you, would you say the situation got this way? Do you think that you know, the mutation of the new virus have anything to do with it there? Uh, 
Probably not. There's only been about a half dozen cases of it reported in Ontario. But what the Premier is saying is he, he's blaming uh, people for not following restrictions, but but he should shoulder some of the blame too. You know, he waited an extra week before bowing to the request from the city of Toronto for increased restrictions. He waited until the holiday was over before that lockdown came in. And in that time, people gathered, of course, on the holiday because there was no restriction. And of course, that's where the big spread comes. Health officials again saying in the second wave, you know, in the first wave, we attacked the virus. In the second wave, they're, they're saying the virus has got us cornered. Uh, some are saying the province is on the verge of triage. We talked about that a moment ago. And the sad thing about that, you're right. I wouldn't want to be a healthcare worker, a doctor or a nurse who's who's got to decide, I can save you, I can, uh, no, not you, you. And, and that's what it could come down to if, if we don't start bringing this thing under control because the sim system is simply too overwhelmed. And, and you start deciding who's going to be taken off life support. And in these cases, families will have no part in that decision. Anna? Well, Thomas, I, I sure hope that things get better and and while we wait um you and fam you and your family stay safe you too Anna.